Hello, my name is Brahmani. My name is Jashoda. We're here today to explore the practice of yin yoga, which is really near and dear to each of us. So please, if you have, gather together a cushion or blanket, a bolster, a tie, um, two blocks, and an eye pillow or eye covering if you have it available. Please know that you have permission as we move through the poses. If anything feels inappropriate to modify or simply take rest on your back or in child. Yin yoga is done with traditional poses in non-traditional ways. We begin the practice by coming into a posture and we meet what we call the appropriate pressure, which means come to the first edge of sensation and it's a place to explore. Now this edge is never to be electrical or alarming but it's also not meant to be neutral, so it's a great place for inquiry. Next, we practice in a way that is muscularly passive. It doesn't mean that you don't feel the muscles, it simply means we're not engaging the muscles. And third, we stay a while. Typically, three to five minutes, which gives us time to slow down from our busy, active lives. And in those three to five minutes, we target the connective tissues, the joints and the bones by placing steady pressure and tensile stretch on these parts of the body. Now, we don't want to overstretch the ligaments, but we want to bring back their natural um, fluidity and elasticity. In addition to targeting the connective tissue joints and bones, Yin yoga stimulates the life force, the flow of it through the, the prana or the chi, through the energetic channels of the body, known as nadis in yoga and meridians in traditional Chinese medicine. There are 12 major meridians in the body. Six are focused in the lower body, six are focused in the upper body. Yin yoga looks at the, at the map of the meridians in the body to inquire into your inner world. Each meridian governs, governs particular qualities of the energetic body, the physical body, the mental body, and the emotional body. Yin yoga is not only energy enhancing, but it's also contemplative, allowing us that slowing down, that staying for a while, allows us to have mindful attention, not unlike meditation, to watch the arising and passing of your moment-to-moment -moment experience. Of course, as Swami Kripalu reminds us, with compassionate self-observation. Therefore, it's a perfect complement to our Kripalu Yoga. So let's begin. Find a seat that's steady and comfortable. Maybe come to sit on the edge of a blanket or a cushion. Feel the sitting bones moving down into the earth as the spine stretches up into the crown of the head. Take a breath and settle in. You can allow your eyes to close or find a soft focus. Feel your shoulders relax down away from your ears and the shoulder blades slide onto the back body. Let your hands rest gently in your lap or on your thighs. Begin with a scanning of the body, the physical body first, noticing what's so inside. Do you feel tension anywhere or freedom? Take a breath and allow it to be just as it is. Allow your attention now to go to the mental body Noticing the quality of your mind. Is there a busyness? Or perhaps it's quiet today. Simply notice. And then check in with the quality of your heart, the emotional body. What's present here for you in this moment? As you settle in deeper and deeper inside, allow your attention now to find the breath. Some long, deep breaths in and out of the body.
And as you breathe, where do you notice the breath most easily? Is it the rising and falling of the belly? Or perhaps it's the expansion or retraction of the ribcage. Or maybe you notice the air coming in and out of the nostrils. Wherever you find the breath most easy, rest your mind there, rest your attention. And for these next few moments, rest with breath in and out. And now bring your attention back to the sitting bones. And right from there, allow your eyes to open. Our first pose is the butterfly pose. Staying seated on the edge of your blanket or cushion, bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees fall out to the sides. Place your hands onto your ankles and slide your feet away until you come to a nice diamond shape. Mm -hmm. Notice the flexion in the knees. Connect once again to the ground through the sitting bones. Take a breath in and as you exhale, hinge from the hips and allow the body to come forward, rounding the spine. Remember to come first to that appropriate edge where the body meets resistance and allow the body to relax. Scan around and notice if there's any tension that you don't need, relax the muscles. And as you come into this muscularly passive mode, feel where the head goes. Does it feel okay just hanging there? Or do you wanna make fists, piling them one on top of the other to rest your forehead? Or perhaps you bring your palms together, bring your elbows into your shins, and rest your forehead or your third eye on your thumbs. Or you could even support your cheek or chin by holding the jaw. So find the, the way that's working for you. Remember that edges can change and you can experiment. Allow the breath to come in and out and feel your natural rhythm. Find the breath that's steady. And then we stay for this while. The meridians affected mostly here are the liver and gallbladder meridians, which is the movement of chi or prana in the body. Long, deep breaths, allowing the moment to unfold just as it is. Feel the natural rhythm of your breath. And if you're familiar with the Ujjayi breath, you can start now with the contraction in the back of the throat. drawing attention within, remembering that there's a whole world inside. Long, deep breaths. One or two more breaths. To release this posture, bring your hands onto the ground in front of you and begin to walk your hands back toward your torso and lift it up back to sitting. Extend your legs out and place your hands behind you and just rest down. Hmm. It's these moments in between that allow the prana to flow. Remember where you place attention, that will grow inside of you. The next posture is the Sphinx posture, 
For this posture, please bring yourself onto your belly and you might want to take your blanket and place it across your mat, resting your belly on the blanket and letting your legs extend out behind mm -hmm. you, hip width apart or, or even more and the feet fall out where they do. Feel that line of your body on the ground. Press into your elbows and begin to press the body up to find shoulder distance apart. Take hold of the outside of your elbows and let the elbows be just a little bit in front of the shoulders. And then extend your forearms and bring your hands into prayer position. As we move into the Sphinx, you notice that it's the lumbar curve is accentuated. We tend to lose this curve at the, as we age. So it's juicing it right now. Mm. Remember that you are in charge of how much you stimulate. If you need more, you can bring your elbows a little closer in towards you. If you want less, take your elbows and move them away from your body. Take a few breaths, feel the muscles draping over the bones and the bones holding the body. You can use any of the hand positions that we've talked about before. This posture stimulates the bladder and kidney meridians, which run not only in the legs, but along the back of the body. We'd like to share very much with you a practice that has really enhanced and inspired us through the years. It's from the Tibetan tradition. It's called the Four Contemplations or the, or the Four Thoughts. And the first thought is to maintain or reflect or maintain an awareness of the preciousness of this human life. What a gift to be born into this human experience. It's a way of remembering gratitude for everything. This life will be filled with the 10,000 joys and the 10,000 sorrows and we'll all experience each of it or some of it. So, it's really a thought to start the day with, remembering how precious this human life is. Take a few breaths in and out of the body. Feel the body relax into the holding. Just a few more breaths here. And then to release, allow your elbows to slide out to the sides and bring your hands resting one on top of the other, letting your forehead come down to rest on your hands. If any place has been taxed during this, take your breath there. Remember where the breath goes, energy flows. To release, press up. And come into table position on all fours. You might like to continue using that blanket to support the knees as we move into wide knee child. From here, begin to bring the toes towards each other and spread the knees wide. And then press the buttocks back towards the heels. In this moment, just pressing into the hands brings the weight back into the hips. Now, if this is inappropriate for you in any way, you can come onto your back and simply spread your knees wide. Otherwise, as you come in and your knees are wide, you might like to come down onto the forearms. Again, continuing to press so that the weight stays back in your hips. 
or spread the elbows now and bring one hand on the other and settle in. Again, that ujjayi breath becomes your companion here. You know, only you live inside, so you know what feels appropriate in the pressure. The edge changes, and you make adjustments. Remember, it's not all or nothing. Life never is. So we find the place where we can stay present and grow in a way to tolerate all of life. And then again, we scan and see that the muscles are passive. And we're staying. Hmm. Again, that ujjayi breath. And now, you might like to take that breath and begin a count. So as you inhale, find that rhythm. And you can count one ohm, two ohm, three ohm. See where the inhale goes. And then let the exhale match it. A place to rest the mind and a way of enhancing the energy as well. Energetically, this again stimulates the kidney and bladder meridians, responsible for our vitality energetically. And sometimes it's said that we look at the, the mental and emotional qualities of fear and wisdom. So just little inquiries along the way. And then our second contemplation. Recognizing that everyone in this life will pass. Knowing that, how can we think anything else other than how precious this life is? But not only will we pass in these bodies, but any of the conditions of the body and the mind and the heart, they too arise and pass. So simply knowing that actually can give us great freedom in our life, a place that we can meet with compassionate observation. So in this last half minute or so, let your breath keep you present and let you see and feel into your moment. You find the mind wandering away. It's not a problem. Come back to this breath, this precious body, and this precious life. This moment. Mm -hmm. Another breath or two. To release this pose, come forward once again onto all fours. Let your hands lift the torso. As you come forward, lift one knee and then the other to bring them in rather than drag them on the floor. And then just come back into child for a moment. Pause and really feel the effects of the pose. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's so important in our life to feel it. And these moments after a pose is also where the chi, the energy that's been gathered through the long holdings, begins to flood the system. And we really get to feel it here. Hmm. To prepare for our next pose, half dog. Once again, come up onto your hands and knees. See that the hips are in line over the knees. To begin to come in, you might like to just come down onto your forearms. And remember, we're being held by the bones. We're not engaging the muscles. You can just see how the body begins to settle in. And then begin to spread the arms out. You can widen them a bit. Mm -hmm. And for some, we may need to bend one of the arms to make any modification. Just meet this body and then Scan around and relax. Mm. Mm. So wonderful to have this breath as a companion. It's just one moment away. You know, peace is one moment away.
physically, this pose is so helpful for any of you who have any rounding of the back, that kyphosis, and practiced over time, it could actually help to reverse that. In addition, all of the meridians that flow through the arms, the small and large intestine, the heart and the lungs are stimulated and juiced. And this, the qualities here are around circulation and respiration, elimination, also love and sorrow. So of course breathe. Scan around and relax what you can. See where there's any unnecessary tension being held. And then feel into the whole experience. Any emotions that are here, space for everything as you watch from that compassionate observer. and allowing it all to unfold, all these waves that arise and fall back here in this precious human life. Mm. Mm. While here resting on the forehead or you might even just rest on a cheek for a little while and then turn the other way to balance it. As we said, it's not all or nothing. We accommodate in life, and this becomes a metaphor for how we walk every day. So a few more breaths. And then to gently release, slide the hands back. Bring them right under the shoulders. And to just create a nice little counter stretch, slide the sacrum down, round the back, draw the head in. Press into your hands and take a breath here into this rounded spine. Mm. Mm. And then gently release. As you release, pay attention to what is happening inside of you. Our next posture is the forward fold. So once again, bring your body to sitting on the edge of a blanket or a cushion and your legs extended. This is a great way to see the natural alignment of your bones. So you just let your legs extend and your feet fall out where they do. Some of you may be internally rotated. Some of you may be externally rotated. It's all okay. Press down into the sitting bones for a moment and grow long once again. Take a few breaths here. And then begin to fold forward, hinging from the hips and either walking your hands forward and coming into that first edge where you meet life right on the edge of experience. You can round your spine and allow your head once again to round down. Here if you have a cushion or a block or a blanket it might help support you or once again you can bring your elbows into your shins and rest your forehead or your chin. Take patience or Allow patience to grow inside of you. Take a full breath in and visualize the breath coming in right through the crown of your head and sweeping down the central channel to the base of the pelvis. And then as you exhale, follow that breath back up through the central channel and out through the crown of the head. Remember that the edge might change. And so you go with that. If you need a little more, you go deeper. 
If it becomes too much, you can back off from the edge. So you learn how to play the edges in your life. This is a, a wonderful practice for seeing what's true and what's real. So you breathe and then you relax what you can. Scan around. Notice if you're holding tension anywhere that you don't need. Take a breath and let it go. Feel your whole internal experience. Watch from the compassionate non-judgment. So we've talked about the preciousness of this human life and that the fact that life will end. The third contemplation is really important. It's to remember that any action, all your actions, whether virtuous or not, have a result. Mm. It reminds me to live life in as best an impeccable way as possible. To not know how things land out there, kind of like the stone that reaches into the river and you see the circles moving out from that center. So it's the law of karma. All actions have responses. Take a few more breaths here. Feel the moment fully. To begin to release, press your hands mm -hmm. into the earth and either lengthen your spine or roll your spine back up as you support it with your hands moving back toward your body. Once again, like butterfly, bring your hands behind you, palms facing away, and just rest back. Hmm. It's the pause that refreshes. Hmm. Wherever your attention goes, you grow. Bringing your body now down onto your back for the next posture, thread the needle. At first, just allow your spine to relax. Feel the natural curves of your spine as you lengthen through the crown of your head and press your sacrum down into the earth. If your knees are not already bent and your feet standing, bring them to that now. Let your right knee fall out to the side as you bring it up towards your chest and place your right ankle on top of your left thigh right near your knee. And here, just relax, allow the bones to soften. Take a breath in and the body settles. This might be enough. If you want to explore more, lift your left foot off the ground, bring your knee closer to your chest. And then sweeping one hand through the hole in your knees, take the other hand and clasp your hands either underneath your thigh or just underneath your knee. And breathe. Everything settles down. Relax the shoulder blades onto the ground and see that the throat is soft. One of the purposes of, the, of practice is to strengthen the container of the body so that you can hold life in a more easy way. Observe what is happening right now. What is what is the experience in the physical body? What's happening in the mental body? The emotional body?
come back to that easy flow of breath in and out. Maybe you visualize a crystal healing energy entering in through the crown, coming all the way down to the floor and back up and out through the crown. A few more breaths. See where this body will go to today. Mm. And then to release, bring your left foot back to the earth, take a breath, and then release the right foot, bringing it back to the earth, bringing your hands to your belly. And feel right inside here. Coming to the other side now, let your left knee come in towards your chest and your left knee fall out to the side. Place your left ankle against your right thigh. As you inhale, draw your right foot off the floor, bring it in towards your, bring it in towards your chest, and then wrap your hands either behind your thigh or just below your knee. See that your shoulders are grounded, your shoulder blades grounded, the throat soft, and the sacrum on the earth. Another reason for practice is to come into the inner world to become intimate, actually maybe your own best friend. Growing into becoming all that you can through a compassionate self-observation. Everything that arises and passes Hmm. As you deepen into this experience, relax what you can. Let the muscles open and release, almost the feeling of melting. Staying with that appropriate pressure, even as it changes. Remembering that it's not all or nothing, that there's somewhere that you can be present for life. Silky smooth breath. The breath is a constant companion and also it's a clue as to what's happening inside of you. Just a couple more. Hmm. Preparing to release, release your hands. Allow your foot to come to the ground and your other foot to come to the earth. You might want to widen your feet out to the edges of your mat and let your knees fall together. Your hands on your belly. And there's nothing to do but just be. Observing the moment just as it is. Everything is okay. Hmm. Remaining on your back. Just take a breath or two. Feel the back body settle down. And then extend your left leg onto the floor. And your arms out in a T position. 
step into the right foot, lift the hips and shift them over to the right. Okay. And then take that right foot and stand it right above your left thigh. And then roll over onto your left hip. At this point, make sure that your right shoulder blade is the ground here. To support the edge here, you can take your left hand, if you like, and bring it on the outside of your right thigh as you come into reclining twist. And as you know, you find the appropriate pressure. You let it show itself to you. It changes. And you come back to this breath. Mm -hmm. You scan around and see, are there any unnecessary tensions being held here? Can you relax? What you're not needing in this, in this pose right here, right now. Mm. And then find the breath. Begin now to feel the breath in the belly as it rises and falls. You might even begin to visualize, imagine that as you're inhaling, there's a gathering of energy. And as you exhale, it's a storing or a spreading throughout your whole being. Gathering, storing. Hmm. Your head can be facing up towards the ceiling, or you can turn it to face uh, the outstretched arm. The willingness to stay the willingness to feel it all. Take another breath or two here. And then to release the pose, release the hand from the knee, bring the body back as you roll back on your spine, press into your hip, shift the hips back to center, extend the leg and just pause for a moment. <sighs> Every action has a result. Feel the result of your actions right here, right now. And to prepare to enter the other side. Bring your left foot to standing, step into your left foot, shift your hips over to the left, stand that foot above on the thigh and roll over onto your left hip. Make any adjustment you need to so that you can really ground through that left shoulder blade You might also like to experiment with that extended arm. You, you can stretch it closer to the ear to bring more energy into the meridians that are in the arms. Again, the head can either look up towards the ceiling or over to the left. Settle in. and allow yourself to be here. Use the tools, you have the breath that keeps you here. Gather and store. And then there's the fourth contemplation. And this one reminds us that suffering ensues when I do not remember my boundless nature. Getting caught up in getting what I want and not getting what I don't want does not bring happiness. This brings me right back again and again when I remind myself, getting what I want and not getting what I don't want does not bring happiness. 
the grasping and pushing away, grasping and aversion. So seeing that, naming it, and remembering the boundless nature that I am, that you are. The ocean of beingness, where we're all connected in the one heart. And here is where in our poses, allowing the energy to flow, we begin to have that experience of more freedom and fluidity. And we can begin to see it in ourselves and see it in others and see where we're all connected. So right here, right now, drop back as best you can into that wide, spacious awareness where everything comes and goes. Thoughts arise, feelings arise, sensations arise. They're not a problem of their own nature. They come and they fall back from where they came. Take another few breaths here. Gathering, storing, home. And to release the pose, release your hand, allow the spine to roll back, bring the knee back up. As the foot comes to the earth, lift and shift your hips back to the center. Either bring your feet to standing or extend the legs. It's nice when the knees come together and you just pause for a moment, really feel the effects of where you've been. The results of your action And if in any way, again, there's a sense of taxing anywhere, just bring your breath, bring your awareness, bring your love there. And that's what flows. That's what grows. For our last pose, right from where you are, draw your knees in towards your chest. And begin to let the knees splay a little bit as you bring your hands behind the knees for a moment. Keep the sacrum on the ground, the shoulders on the earth, the back of the head to the earth. And to come into a beginning pose of happy baby, slide your hands on the inside of the legs and take hold of the ankles. This is a great beginning, or maybe this is where you stay. But if the body wants more, you can lift the feet up towards like standing on the sky, but the thighs down towards the ground. You can continue to hold the ankles or take hold of the feet by grasping onto the big toe or hold on the outer or inner edges of the foot. So experiment and find what's appropriate for you. Settle in. Hmm. This is a great pose at the end of practice to help balance the spine. Just settle back right into our center. So we'll hold for just a short time. And again, find your ujjayi breath. Ride on the wave of breath. into the boundless nature that you are. Whatever else arises and passes, it's okay. The boundless nature is still here. Remembering the preciousness of this human life, 
that life ends for everyone and that all of our actions, whether virtuous or not, have a result and that when I do not remember my boundless nature, I suffer. Hmm. Take another breath or two here. Hmm. To release, release your feet, bend your knees, draw your knees into your chest and just give yourself a nice hug for a moment. You deserve it. Hmm. And now please prepare your body to take rest. Allow the legs to splay out and if you like a cushion or something under your knees, please do that or if you're cool, cover yourself. And if you have something for your eyes, just to help that relaxation, bring that to cover the eyes. Hmm. And then just take a few long, steady breaths. And as you exhale, feel the back body begin to just melt into the earth. This earth that rises up to meet you. the back body softens, the front body begins to melt down. Hmm. Scan around, just scan around in your body and let it show you any place that can relax. When you find attention, bring your breath, relax what you can. And settle back, really, settle back into the essence of you, that boundless nature. Aryom, dear one, Satnam, precious name. When I call on the light of my soul, I am home. Adio, Sadnam, precious name. When I call on the light of my soul, I am home. nothing to do and nowhere to go. Everything is okay, just as it is. And so are you. As you hear the sound of the bell, let it be a gentle calling back through the sense doors.
hearing the sound of my voice and any sounds around the room. And simply taking a full breath and feeling back into this body. Mm-hmm. Begin to invite a little movement through the fingers and the toes. And just allow a gentle and organic stretch to happen. Mm. Until you gradually draw the knees in towards your chest. Roll over to one side. Just pause there in in the fetal pose for a moment. Hmm. Now here in the great womb, you know. And then bring your hands to the earth, press up to sitting. And once again, come to a comfortable seated position sitting on the edge of your blanket or cushion right at the edge, and get grounded once again. Mm. Feel those sitting bones connect to the earth. And then rise up through the crown. The hands gently rest. The eyes can close, or just a gentle gaze. And go within for a few moments and feel where you are. The quality now in this body. This breath and energy. This mind and heart. As you meet this moment, reflect on the gift you take with you into your day. And really let that bubble up inside you. Repeat it back and let it grow inside you. Hmm. And then please, a moment of gratitude for all that we've received. Hmm the gift of practice, this inward turning, the gift of community. And please, may we dedicate this practice, dedicate it so all beings may know happiness and the root of happiness. And may all beings be free of all suffering and the root of suffering. May this reach out to touch all hearts everywhere, Hmm. omitting none. Hmm. And feel how that blessing comes back to you many times. And to close our time together, if you'd like to join us, take in a breath and we'll chant the sound of Om together. So on your next breath, Hmm. And once again, bringing palm to palm, hands in prayer, Anjali Mudra, and a moment to bow to your own heart and acknowledge that heart and our one heart. Jai Bhagwan, Namaste. Namaste.